Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to discuss about the biggest feature which was released in Note 17 and you would probably not find it in the release notes as well. In the release notes, we do have some amazing Note 17 features which you can see as the headlines basically. More promisified APIs, OpenSSL support, better stack traces with Node.js, V8 upgraded and so on. But one feature which is not explicitly mentioned in these release notes is the ability to finally clone an object, finally deep clone an object for the very first time natively in JavaScript. What do I mean by deep cloning an object? What does that all mean? And what is the new feature in Node.js? Let's take a look. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So before actually looking at what is the new method in JavaScript in Node.js 17, let's actually understand a little bit about objects in JavaScript. So if I create an object which has a prop one of Mehul, and if I try to create another object, which is same as the previous object, and if I go ahead and just say another object dot prop one is code dam for example and if i try to console log my original object you're gonna see that because i have written this statement this also overrides the original object which i had right and the reason for this is because in javascript you can see i lose the mehul as a value and i only see code dam even in the object which is the obj part the reason for this is that when we do something like this, objects in JavaScript are referenced by memory. So this statement right here means that whenever you are trying to set, assign an object to another object, the values never really copy, right? Only the reference of the previous object gets copied to the next object. And whenever you are trying to add a property or remove a property, what you are essentially doing is trying to like decode the reference of that object in the memory somewhere. And then you pretty much have two objects, two object names, I should rather say, which are pointing to the same object in the memory. Now, if you have used ES6 a little bit, you know the very simple cure of something like this is to destruct an object like this. Now, if you do, and if you run this, you're gonna see you still get Mehul, but on the other hand, if you console log the the modified object you get the modified value this is all fine and good but let's go one level deeper so i'm going to say prop 2 and then i'm going to say another prop and i'm going to say this is also mehul or let's say mehul 2 for example now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say another object dot prop 2 dot another prop and I'm, then i'm going to set this to code down and a little typo over here this should be another prop not another object so you can see now, when I try to access another object with a prop2, with another prop, what we're gonna see is if I run this, you're gonna see we get the original object modified. You can see it changed from mehul2 to code dam. And at the same time, our new object also is modified, which is expected. But the reason our original object got modified is because in JavaScript, when you do a destructuring like this, this is actually a shallow clone. So let's take a look at this program over here, which explains this in a little tidier fashion. So we have another object over here and a nested object. This is like a nested object, right? So I create a copy for this and I try to compare object and copy with each other. Now, when I run this code with just object is copy, you can see that it returns me false because obviously they are not referring to the same object because that's what destructuring does right we know that but the moment you try to do it on a second level prop you're gonna see that your object dot prop one which is this particular object right here actually is the same as copy dot prop one right so what we say that when you use destructuring you are doing shallow cloning of an object that means only the first layer of the keys and the values would be copied as different values in the newer object and the rest of the objects if they were as present as values they would still point to the same objects in the memory this is like super important because now i cannot really work with this copy variable and say prop one dot prop two dot prop three is equal to something because the moment i say that i'm not only just modifying the copy I'm also modifying the original object. So this is like not something I can do. Now the question then is how do you deep clone an object? 
And deep cloning pretty much just means that you pretty much just reconstruct this object from ground up that the copy object and the original object don't really share any sort of common memory among their objects, right? Because you don't want the scenario where you change a property on the object, on a original object and it reflects in the copy or vice versa. So the practice of creating two objects from a single object where both of them are completely independent from each other. This is known as like deep cloning an object. Now in JavaScript, there are multiple ways to deep clone an object. And one of the popular ways which I remember is you actually stringify the object itself, which is the original object, and then you parse it again. Now, of course, this has its own drawbacks that you lose on JavaScript specific data structures or, you know, functionalities like functions or circular dependencies and so on, or maybe like even things like null or undefined things like these. So you would not really null, null is valid in JSON, but you would lose on undefined, for example. So this is like a problem, but for a majority of cases, this used to work fine. So if I say like deep clone something like this. And if I do a deep clone of this, then you're going to see if I remove the shallow clone version, if I go to terminal and run the script, you're going to see in this case, we pretty much get false on both of them, right? Because I'm parsing this and I'm then stringifying it and then parsing it again. And if you want to just take a look at the deep clone object, you can just deep clone and take a look at both of these objects together the following way. You can see that, okay, let's do it one by one. So if you see the deep clone object is pretty much the same as your original object, except for the fact that it is truly a deep clone. For the first time in JavaScript with node 17, you need node 17 for this. What JavaScript has done is that now all you have to do is say structured clone. And let me just see S-T-R-U-C-T-U. Red clone ads and the VS code syntax is still not like really implemented and the support as well. But the syntax really is just calling structured clone with the object which you want to clone, right? And it will deep clone that particular object. If I run this again, you're going to see that we still get both of the objects as same, but the structured clone object also is different, completely different from your original object. Now, of course, because this is a native function, this is natively available in JavaScript. That means this will be much better solution compared to just json.stringify and then parsing it again. And it will also be much faster, should be not really much faster, but should be comparatively faster from other implementations, right? But this might be something which might be very useful where you were using a lot of deep cloning and where you wanted to preserve the original objects because in a lot of applications, you might see that you need to deep clone an object over and over again and maybe you want to create a separate, completely separate object for that. And in those cases, structured clone might just be performant and relevant for you. Now, this is one of the things which was missing from the official Node.js 17 release thing. I'm not, I'm, I'm sure like it will be present somewhere in the documentation about it. But yeah, I mean, this, this is like an interesting addition to Node.js and this feature is also coming to Chrome, Firefox, to browsers as well, basically. And yeah, with the release of Node 17, Node 16 has been promoted to LTS. So this is like a good news. If you were looking for upgrading to Node 16 in production, this might be a good time because now they will be supporting it long term. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video very soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video. Video. subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching